part, right? Oh, I'm Davis, so associate planner. Right, we'll that nice right. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> end of this meeting I've got a, a public properties issue that kind of okay. came up last minute but it can wait if this one sure so. um can I have a on staff here okay all right everybody's here let's get started sidewalk tables Nick this is the public properties meeting for Monday, January 12th at 8.30 in the morning. Um, the first item on the agenda is something we've brought to you before. We have uh, an ongoing issue with tables and merchandise in our downtown uh, mostly, but this is potentially a citywide issue, though we haven't had requests from other parts of the city to use uh, our sidewalks for uh, you know, private business activity. Um, the city attorney uh, recommended that we look at our existing right-of-way permit uh, ordinance and seeing if we ought to be permitting uh, businesses to use the right-of-way through our existing ordinance. However, our existing ordinance is set up purely for construction. And so this is a preliminary draft that we're presenting of what a uh, right-of-way use permit would look like that would be parallel to our existing process, but this would just be uh, purely for occupying the public right-of-way and the proposal would be to have a number of criteria which uh, could be administratively permitted rather than actually having to take this through for council of approval every time um, and so we're just opening this for preliminary discussion and l had worked on this I, I don't know if you have anything that you want to say or if you want to um, I, I think there's a handful of sort of variables that we need to get some input on so that we can refine this further and then bring it back to you uh, at, at the next meeting so yeah so the draft before you is kind of an amalgam of other cities um, public right-of-way use permits um, so everything is open to discussion um, if we would like to change any uh, terms or any stipulations in here um, there are a couple of things that I specifically wasn't sure about and wanted to get your input on um, including how we wanted to address existing uses um, so do you have any comments? And I, the, the big issue again is that WashDOT, uh, for, for the state highway, WashDOT uh, requires that there be a lease in place for the, the right of way use when you're using it for private purposes. And so there are some RCWs that obligate us to essentially enforce their leasing provisions. Um, and so the criteria that are listed here, and one of the criteria for an administrative approval of this permit is that they have a WashDOT lease in place. And so we wouldn't approve any lease until they've contacted WashDOT to get the approval from WashDOT. And that, along with ADA accessibility and making sure that they understand that they have to keep an a certain area clear for, for safe passage, uh, and then just specifying that the furniture be durable and uh, not, you know, you know, there's commercial grade stuff that somebody's not going to get hurt on within our right of way, and that they also have a certificate of liability insurance. I think that's that's the main thing that we're concerned with is insurance, ADA accessibility, and this washed out lease. And if they meet those things, then we would give them an administrative permit, and it could be for a year, it could be uh, for longer. And um, so, yeah. So it's a we have a nominal <coughs> charge for a ten dollar per month sidewalk rental. <clears throat> plus they pay their state DOT airspace lease agreement. Well, and we not, might not even necessarily have a fee. We might have an application fee, but yeah, I'm not looking at this as a revenue generator, just as us fulfilling our ob obligation to make sure that they have a lease in place with WashDOT and then, that we just check their insurance. So if they don't pay us $10 a month, do they have to pay this WashDOT? They have to pay WashDOT if it's a state highway. What's that fee? Do you know? Uh, I talked to them and they said that they have to go fair market value and what they said, you know, $90 a month is what they told me. Yeah. 
Uh, it's, it can vary. I mean, it can vary from you know fifty dollars a month up to two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Kind of is a, a range for a storefront depending, depending on how on much how square much footage. They're, they're be yeah, it, it really depends on how much of the right of way they want to use, and it's they just have to calculate a fair market value um, based on what is requested. And so they would do all of that before they would have to apply to us. Exactly. And so and then they would come in with their certificate of insurance, and we would say. You're okay. When I read this section, when I read this this document. Um, I guess I read it differently, mm -hmm. and when I read it, I thought, well, I thought it would allow some of our um, businesses along Bethel to apply to put A boards in um, the right of way. I didn't read this as just furniture or merchandise. I read this as actually using the right of way for other purposes. Well, signs are already prohibited in the right of way, so this wouldn't be changing that. Well, that before. was my that was my point. Is it doesn't reference that in here? Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And so, so we need to create a cross reference to a boards. And is this only Bay Street because it's a state highway and a not? No, highway? this would be throughout the city. It, yeah. it could be either, and we were looking for direction because if we only want to do this for state highways and not you know, bother other businesses that are seeking to do this, we could take that approach. Though I think, you know, from a public works standpoint, we don't want people just sticking things out on the sidewalk. So it's either allowed, not allowed, or it's allowed by permit, I think are the alternatives. And it could be citywide or it could be downtown. Yeah, I like the idea of having a uniform <clears throat> city and then the specific about 166 or 160. Correct. This is Bay Street, isn't it? Yeah. Correct. Any state highway within the city it just needs to say, thou shalt get an airspace lease from WashDOT. So the other thing that I picked up when I read through it is um, Carol's recommending that it uh, be Mark's group and not your group for the application. Yeah, that's I, I would prefer that, actually. And I, I, <laughs> well, well, it's a function of a right-of-way permit. Okay. And so I didn't see that change in throughout here. It's still, there's several, several references to development director so well and, and when carol initially recommended this she recommended this just without having we didn't have her do extensive review of her existing right-of-way permit so when she was talking about public works i think she was referring to also the permit that if you're doing construction in the right-of-way that's certainly a public works permit i think just for the just purely the use of the right-of-way it can go in either direction and we'll run this by her again once we kind of get some input from this community. I, I like the idea of public works yeah. for, for all of it since they're most like you guys are most likely going to be more involved. So if you can make that change, I think <coughs> I'd pick that up. Sure. And the other sentence it says display of merchandise shall be prohibited within the downtown overlay district. Um, if we're talking about Bay Street, that just seems like. Well, and that, and that was the other policy decision or input that we wanted from you is, are we going to allow or, or not allow merchandise in the right of way? And I know when I worked in a retail uh, store in Bellingham, we had sidewalk sales, and I remember getting in trouble for it from the city. <laughs> so that's, uh, I think that's a, we did get in trouble from the city because you're not supposed to have merchandise on the sidewalks. We were allowed signs and other things, but um, that is typically a contentious issue, and it also, it's really dependent on how much sidewalk space you have and whether you're, you're, you sort of inhibiting the flow of pedestrian traffic versus there, there being sufficient room. And so. Well, that was, if you remember, there were two issues that brought this to the forefront. One were the bistro tables at the bistro, <coughs> and then the other were merchants that were bringing merchandise out mm -hmm. routinely, um, and then especially weekends that were actually <coughs> blocking the sidewalk. And then we had some ADA and active and so I, I think this actually takes care of the ADA and the liability stuff if we want to have merchandise, but they just have to understand that there needs to be a clear zone. And then, well, wouldn't the same zone apply to all of it? Anything yeah, yeah. And, but it's, I mean, if they agree to it. It has to be at least this wide, and it can go narrower for up to a stretch of 20 feet if they, I, I, we would just hand them a, a handout. I, I guess so my rules. question becomes just, what's the difference of having tables and chairs out there as opposed to having merchandise? Mm -hmm. If they're within the same space. The envelope, yeah. 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 I, I, to me, I don't see a, a, a difference. Yeah, I guess it, I, I think that um, really it's, it's purely aesthetic and it's people versus, and there are nice displays and there are probably clutter, cluttered displays and it's really what. Nice stores and there's yeah. cluttered stores. Yeah. 
So we can't really legislate that. No, I, we can't. I can see where this is certainly considered progress, but I'm concerned because I thought that we were going to facilitate the ability of owners and restaurants to be able to use the sidewalk. And it sounds like if we're punting it to the state where they get an air rights lease of $90 a month, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, I, mean, I think the issue there, and that's why this died before, is that we don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. When this came up before and, and Brandy started working on the <clears throat> merchant permit and the other permit, and then once I looked into it, this, the state right away goes from face of building to face of building. And that's the issue having Bay Street. It isn't like other state highways where it may go to the to the face of the curb. Mm -hmm. Our right of way happens to be the state's right of way has to be from face of building to face of building. And so we don't have a choice. And I think I think in, in terms of enabling, making this administrative is the best way that we can enable it under the uh, with the situation that we have with Washington. Well, I, I would like Kathy Woodside not to have to be the one telling people they can't do it if it's really up to the state. But on the other hand, maybe this is something we need to talk to our legislators about that this is hampering business on our main downtown corridor. And well, we can't put anything out between face to face. Or right. face, well, face. When I talked to the state, they were very clear. And, and you're talking to the DOT, you're not talking to the legislators who would change No, this. but I'm, I'm, so this is their charge, and this is what they told me. They're no different than the DNR. The DNR is in charge of state lands and managing of state lands. The state highway is in charge of managing state right-of-way. And so the use of a state right-of-way without that being paid for is basically gifting of <clears throat> our state tax dollars as opposed to gifting of you know city funds and they take that very seriously so my my question then would be who's going to monitor which business has an application that's approved and not i mean we're going to know mm -hmm. but if somebody puts something that, out and there's no application who's going to drop a dime on them? well that would be that would be code enforcement okay. You know, I mean, I think so we're going to turn them into the state for not having their. And we're there is an RCW that requires us to basically enforce the enforce the state. Right. Rules. We should have been doing it all along. We just haven't. Yeah. I would say at this point, we'll, public works will say, you know, as part of the application permit, is that um, we'll just make verify that you've got your airspace lease. So they'll we'll check the box, you've got your airspace lease, great, we'll issue the permit. If they don't, then Public Works will have to turn it over to code enforcement. What I would like to see happen if we move in this direction is the city to facilitate having someone um, come and speak perhaps at the Port Orchard Bay Street Association and explain to them how they get the, air the airspace lease and review the costs yeah. and and I would like to see us do some education before we move, you know, forward mm -hmm. with this. I yeah, agree. I mean, the alternative is SR-166 becomes ours, and that's not a viable goal. Right, no, exactly. I mean, and other than that, I mean, we, we could also, you know, I suppose, we haven't really been enforcing this. I sort of asked Watchdot, I said, you know, what happens if we don't do anything? And they basically said, well, eventually you're going to get a letter from our director. But what that says and what it requires us to do is, you know, is yet to be seen. So Does it's the city we, have an airspace lease for our marquee? We do not. No, and I, when that's that's a whole, <laughs> yes, yes. that was a whole can of worms. Do we have an exemption? No, no. we have nothing. I, I so pondered that. Theoretically, the state can come in and say, rip it down, you're not paying mm -hmm. or pay a lease for it one way or the other. The state right of way is for public use. To put a private marquee within the state right of way does not meet the definition of public use. So, yeah, I, I think that the marquee technically is shouldn't be there. That we should we should be paying we should have an airspace lease for the marquee. And I did ask them about that because I said, well, what if the the city were to lease the entire downtown corridor, including the marquee, right. and then to sublet this to individual businesses uh, or to allow individual businesses to use this? I said, you know, ballpark, what do you think the cost is? And he said, you know, it's probably in the, you know, $10,000 a year realm would be at least for the entire sidewalk through the downtown. Size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's prohibitive. 
I mean, that's an option. I mean, that is an option. And I think if, if we could do that, um, that's less than $1,000 a month. If it were, you know, if it's $1,000 a month, 12000 for the year. And if we collected some nominal fee from each business, I'm not totally opposed to that idea. It's not a bad idea because we can even charge half of what the state would charge just in a subway. It's something we can certainly look into, and then we would have to have something similar to this in order to, for it, us to permit. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We could explore entering a lease with the state. You're just saying as an alternative to having each individual get an airspace lease with the state, the city company. would go ahead and just do an airspace lease for the entire downtown. Yeah. Keep the right. state out. Right. Yeah. We don't have right. to be big brother and monitor to the state. We just monitor for right. ourselves. Yeah. And, then and you were speaking off the cuff as far as you know, a ballpark figure, so right. they'd have to calculate the fair market value of everything that we wanted to lease, but we could ask them for that. My, my thought is better to deal with the known than have some surprise from a change at Washdot mm -hmm. saying, hey, you know, you guys need to pay us $25,000 a year for that. I mean, if we can mm -hmm. negotiate a reasonable fee and we control that space on both sides, then it's, I'd rather <coughs> deal with the known than, I don't like something hanging out there over our head where we can get a surprise letter at any time and be at the mercy of whatever whim. So I guess that uh, that sort of leads into a discussion, though, of what is the future of the marquee itself as a structure? Well, maybe we <laughs> enter in the lease in such time as we, you know, we, we have we an opt-out clause or something yeah. if we decide to tear well, it down. Well, regardless of the marquee, regardless of the marquee, um, if we lease the airspace above that sidewalk we benefit our merchants downtown mm -hmm. though though i guess the and, and maybe I, i'm just thinking off the top of my head but there is the provision of us gifting public funds and so if we don't then pass on a fair market cost to those businesses are we right. gifting public funds and so right. if the marquee is gone potentially we would be right no we they, they would have to understand there's a cost to this the other point that came up to me when I was reading this is we talk about individual businesses. Um, what about the art walk? You know, and events like that that kind of put things here and there. Yeah, we've been through that right down that road, mm -hmm. right? Well, and, and flags and all that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's basically what Nick was saying. Is, you know, at this point, it's just not risen to the level of enforcement. Um, it's always been a potential issue. If the state chose to come through, and say, yeah. I kind of like the idea of us at least not taking control of it. I wonder, if, ourselves. I wonder if that would be like LTAC funds. I, I was thinking that myself. I'm wondering if, if, if LTAC funds would be available for that. Or uh, applicable or Correct. available from that standpoint. Yeah. Do they qualify? Is, is LTAX heads and beds? Yes. Promotes heads and beds. But it can also be used with cap for <clears throat> capital projects. But the capital projects um, have to be done by a 501 501C3 three or 6. There's, of course, also the do nothing approach to this, which is probably why this has never been resolved. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we're trying to make it better, but it seems like the more we look into it, it's like... Yeah, and, and right now we could just we could just tell them, you need to talk to WashDOT directly and go get a lease and, and just leave it at that and let... But, th but then we're, we're potentially... <coughs> we don't have anything requiring insurance, and so I don't know if there's liability on our part. Right, and, but we would still be the enforcement agency on that. Well, I mean, that's what happened last time. Right. Remember, we had actually brought to this body two separate agreements, one for merchandise, one for out, outdoor use, and then the whole state thing came up and it's just like... And I, I should mention now <clears throat> that my memory has been jogged, I, we did send a letter to the bakery because they don't have a lease and we said, look, the city is really going to work on trying to figure out a way to make it so that you can have tables, but for the time being you have to remove those and it's winter, so <clears throat> I don't think that's a problem. They haven't come to us to talk, but I said... As soon as we have a resolution to this, we'll let you know what that resolution is so that you can get your tables back out. And we, we want to support tables on the sidewalk. But that 
<clears throat> that is sort of something that's hanging over us. And I guess if there is a deadline for getting something done, it's because they would like to get their tables back out on the sidewalk. Yeah, I mean, there's an ownership change too. Yeah. Oh, another one. Yeah, that was uh, Gabrielle. That was Gabrielle, and they've now sold it to the that one place. Gotcha. And they just put it out there. I don't know if it's still out there or not, but I, I just said they need to be removed immediately, and, and we're going to work on a fix for this. Yeah. I I think we should look look to see what it would cost for us to. Uh, Okay, so space ourselves. for the next meeting, then you would want to know what a, a lease price was and uh, including a provision for us to, to manage Separate, that area. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah, all the liability that, insurance issues would stay in place, obviously. But you know, we're gonna if somebody gets hurt, we're gonna get sued as part of that party, anyways. So, here's a, so here's a question when, when it was just deal with the state, I this was just through the hole from. Kentucky Fried Chicken, or actually going up all the way Mile Hill. It's you got to remember 166, so it's applicable to. It could be any. It could be Les Schwab. It could be anybody that wants to put merchandise out on the street. So if we're going to pay for a lease, theoretically, is there going to be an issue with doing the lease specifically within the DOD or people outside? Well, I think right now, initially, we look at the lease that includes the marquee mm -hmm. right. so and that would this. see and so that would not include the swim deck side or um uh or blocks or, or, or six floor to bay like street because the marquee is not going to feel there. excluded because he wants to put <clears throat> tagger wants to put something out i mean should we just say it's from from Geiger to Harris, or you know what I'm saying? Is it right, no, I understand what you're yeah. saying. We do want to limit it, but and I was trying to find a boundary, which is why I thought the marquee. But if I've, we don't want to exclude um, 640 Bay Street and the swim deck area, yeah, and I, and I guess what then we still may need this to go to handle everywhere else in the city that yeah. has a state highway, so it's it, that would be. Getting a lease would be in addition to making the changes you mentioned about the A board. So there would probably be a section in here that would be exclusively for the area. For the DOD. So for the DOD. Right, and I think that's kind of the, but you got the wings. We, we would describe whatever the boundary of the lease was in the, the text here. In the, yeah. say for areas I'm just saying for business. I, mean, I could see businesses up at Mile Hill, for example, but potentially <coughs> want to put things out, whether it's signage or... They do now? Right. Mm -hmm. So then they're going to say... Well, well, see, that's why I had brought up the question of signage, because you're saying signage is excluded from this. Right. Signage is excluded, but there... I'm just saying there's... I could see, or I guess I've seen driving up Monaco. Uh, uh, potential potential businesses... Well, not sandwich boards, but I think there's potential businesses that would put potentially something on the right of way. So. I mean, this makes sense to be just downtown related, but I don't know the unintended consequences of somebody feeling like, hey, you did a lease for them, but you didn't do it for us. Well, I think the marquee gives us, gives us reason to look at the lease for that specific area. Right. Okay. Or like I said, or the specific downtown starting at Kitsap Bank. Actually, that's why Bank Street or from the 7-Eleven in as you come around the corner. Yeah. Sydney Park, Warriors, and Tiger. Yeah, I'm still trying to get my head over how they would calculate fair market value of something that isn't generating any income now. Well, I mean, that's their process. I know, and I'm thinking, how could they come up with such an exorbitant bit? That's for later, I guess, but that's the point that we might want to talk to the legislators and say, this is what we're trying to do. Can you help us? Exactly, and I, um, and, and I, I support your idea of doing that, but I think our first step is to find out is it possible and yeah. what would they charge? Okay. All right, great. Thank All right. you. I'll be back next meeting. Next item, Nick. So the next item is parks rules, which we have talked about over the last couple of meetings. And um, we did contact AWC Risk Management to talk to them about this. And uh, there is a provision in RCW 424.210 that um, limits the city's liability. And so the games and sports issue we were talking about can be removed from the draft ordinance. ordinance. Uh, we did also 
uh, reach out to uh, the city council and um, at least uh, Rob did con comment and his main concern was the watercraft restrictions and access, the, you know, potential kayak launches and things like that. And um, we felt that, uh, you know, we would just need to designate that those things are okay in our waterfront parks and we'd be, uh, we'd be clear there. But beyond that, um, let's see, there's a couple of uh, corrections that have been made and, and really I think firearms and explosives um, let's see, and these, sorry, the comments that are in, in purple are provided by risk management, so they actually reviewed this for us and gave us a few suggestions. Um, but beyond that, I, you know, I think we're at a point where this is probably ready to go unless there are further concerns on the part of the committee. Well, I have some questions. Mm -hmm. um, under definitions on number seven, when it talks about person, is that a, a, a state definition or a federal definition of person? That, yeah, I, I don't that, know, I mean, but that's, just a but that's uh, <laughs> I, I definitely, uh, I know where you're coming from there based on things I hear in the news. Um, so we can look into that, but I think that's really for the purposes of implementing these rules. Yeah, I just looked at it and I thought, did we make that up or is I think that... we probably borrowed it from another set of park rules. Yeah. So. I also, under hours, when we, obviously we give the opening and closing hours of each individual park will be whatever it is for that park. But my question is just a little bit of a housekeeping one, and are the hours for those parks available on our city website? Can someone go to the city website and find out what hours parks are open? I don't think we have established hours, do we? We don't have established hours. So if we want to establish specific hours for specific parks, parks we should do it. Um, I mean, in general, park hours, on two of the parks we specifically posted in working with the police department from dawn to dusk. We did that so we could deal with some drug right. issues. Right. So isn't that generally what you put, dawn to dusk, unless posted otherwise? Well, Would that work? we've posted the dawn to dusk. Um, for example, at the McCormick Park, because of logistics in trying to actually open and close, close it, it. Right. we had just left it open until recently when we had our fourth vandalism of the park and we finally just closed it at night so now we've been closing it every day at about four where we were trying to just keep it open and that just hasn't worked out somebody keeps getting in there with a uh, small truck and doing donuts so on the grass yeah, yeah. really yeah it's happened four times now it's it's just, more time walking over there yeah. so we, we kind of we, first time okay we'll just see and it just kept happening and so finally i i just had uh, bill close it at night or dave bolts he's opening and closing and i was way too in front of him. so that's very disappointing but my point is that depending on the park and the location uh, i have a logistics issue with just i think if they're open they're open and there's a police enforcement from dawn to dusk but they're open because otherwise i can't necessarily close them unless I have a, a relationship with the police department. If it's if it's June twenty first, dusk doesn't hit till ten o'clock. Yeah, but even if it's even if the gate's open, if it's posted dawn to dusk and there's somebody there even with an open gate, it's still posted. It's still enforceable, isn't it? Right. That's what I'm saying yeah. is is if we go to dawn to dusk, um, it allows and we just have parks are open, then yeah. it falls just into kind of a police enforcement piece. I don't want to get into the thing where we're actually having to open and close gates and open right. and close bathrooms. I would just say dawn to dusk unless otherwise posted. My other thing is I don't understand. I, I see the comment here why firewood is listed under firearms and explosives. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, again, that was borrowed language, and so we'll just write firewood. That. Are you sure that that wasn't, did it mean to say fireworks? It's possible. It could have been a, a spelling correct yeah. when it was originally written. Uh, change it to fireworks and then um, and then I do like thank you very much for taking the games and sports out I think the issue of archery is addressed also with projectiles and then on the third comment they provided we'll add wine garden to the list unless there's an objection <coughs> you know I think you should check with the county if, if that is if you're talking firearms mm -hmm. in parks they they restrict the firearms and it's illegal for them to do that by state 
Well, I, I think this is discharging a firearm, not oh, okay. possessing one. Okay, okay. Yeah, that is possession, not use. You can't yeah. use one, but you, you know. I think this probably two years ago ran into Yeah, no, we're not, we're not banning firearms in the parks. It's just 